going on everybody and welcome back to the channel now today we've got the 36 ipl match to review we've got the rcb well they get absolutely demolished by the sunrisers hyderabad srh i mean what a turnaround this has been they lost their first two games first two or three games we thought, yep, yeah, they're going to finish down the bottom of the table again. This is the same team as last year. They got rid of David Warner. They let Rashid Khan go. I thought, yeah, this team is, this team is fucked. Essentially, that's what I thought. Um, but no, they are playing way above expectations. They are one of the best teams in the league. That feels strange to say, but they are really, they, they're beating everyone in front of them. They're beating the best teams in the competition, and this is a real, real worry to 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 watch. Well, no, not a, that's the wrong wording. This is a real... How do I, how do I explain it? Well, this is a, a worry for, for Punjab, firstly, because another spot, another good team, just means less chances for us making the playoffs. So, firstly, I'd appreciate it if they stopped. Secondly, well done. <laughs> well done to SRH, because they are playing terrific cricket at the moment. They're, they're just playing as a team. It, you know, the first few games, I think we all thought, this team just looks shit. Williamson doesn't look that good. Like, they're just not playing. The list isn't good. They're not that good. That's literally what everyone thought, except maybe Sunrise fans. And I don't want to hear anyone come at me and say, oh, I knew SRH were going to be the best team. I knew they were going to be amazing. No, you don't. No, you did not. Because there is not one person I've seen predict uh, Sunrisers to be one of the best teams in the competition this season. But, hey, credit to them because they are playing really, really well. And let's just go through the review. There's not a whole lot to talk about considering there was only a combined... Shit. Anyone who's good at math, can you... 68 plus 72. So let's say 140 plus 242. Uh, shit, I'm lost. I'm lost. It's in the 140 regions. Look, we didn't have too many combined runs. Let's just say that. Because, um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be doing math problems at 9.30 in the morning. Because that is just not me anymore. <laughs> I, I've been out of school for too long to be doing math problems at 9am. Um, Alright, player of the match. <laughs> the man, Marco Jansen. Or Jansen, however you want to call it. Uh, the big South African quick. He is a beast. And I, as soon as I first ever saw this guy play, I didn't even know he played a game last season in the IPL. I think he played a game for like Mumbai. or I can't even remember, to be honest. But... This, this wasn't his debut season, but this is his best season, obviously, by a long way. He's playing games. He's taking polls. He is dominant. He's going to dominate all forms of cricket for the next... I don't think... How old is Jansen? I, I actually don't know that. I'd say 24? 21? He is 21. He is born in the year 2000. Nah, okay. This is... He is 21. He turns 22 this year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there is just absolutely no doubt in my mind that he will be the best bowler in the world in about four or five years. That's like, I know that may be a big call, but <laughs> the, like when I've seen him bowling to Boomera, to, oh, to bowling to Boomera, bowling to, you know, Col or like all the big guys in that Indian tour of South Africa last year, or was it early this year? I, look, the years happen so quick. I can't even remember what year it was, if it was last year or early this year, but that tour to South Africa where they got done in the Test Series and Yanton was a big reason for South Africa winning that series. He was dominant with the ball and he, now he's dominating with the white ball. His first over, he took three wickets and the game was essentially over. <laughs> From there, uh, Yanton deserved player of the match. But hey, if you guys are new, subscribe. I can't remember if I've said that already, but I'll say it again. RCB into bat first. I think they won the toss and elected to bat first, I think. I, correct me if I'm wrong, someone. Uh, Faf Duplessis hit a nice four, and then he got bowled. Like, Marco Jansen is, the way he's able, as a tall left arm quick, especially to right-hand batsman where he's able to bowl it out, you know, just outside of off stump, a bit short, and then the way it just nips back in and, and swings right back in is out of this world. It is, um, it reminds me a lot of like a... I was going to say a Brett Lee, but they're completely different, you know, handed bowlers. Brett Lee was obviously a right-hander, but not their actions either. It's just the way they're, 
just their scariness at the pitch. Even a Mitchell Johnson, for that matter. Oh, well, that's, that would have been a much better example, actually. <laughs> like, that's who he reminds me of, is a Mitchell Johnson sort of type. You know, he may not be as scary looking as a Mitchell Johnson. He may not be as, you know, as big as a guy as a, as, as a Mitchell Johnson. And <laughs> But he is a tall, quick, special young bowler, is Yanton. Um, yeah. Anuj Rawat, he's gone for zero, off two. Coley comes out. <laughs> I mean, what is going on? Seriously, guys, what is going on? Coley's gone for a back-to-back -back consecutive Ducks. Golden Ducks as well. I mean, uh, just let's have a moment of silence for Vera and Rohit Sharma's run tallies at the moment. All right, that's enough of moment of silence. It's just not great. <laughs> it's not great at the moment. And you think of two, India's most two dominant, you know, top order batsmen in the last 10 years. Kohli, Rohit Sharma, neither of them are, they're, they're both struggling massive at the moment. Um, to make runs, so in in every format across, so I'm I'm actually pretty worried. And I said in my video the other day, I asked the question of, do you think this season we will see a Rohit Sharma or Virat Kohli century? Most people said no. To be honest, most people said I don't think we will. It re really is looking that way. Virat, we just need him to bounce back. Even Rohit, one of them just has to bounce back and prove to us that they've still got it at the level because it's a little bit concerning. I'm not even going to lie. If I was an RCB fan, obviously there is no chance in hell that I would ever bench Coley, obviously. But, gee whiz, you need him to make some runs, especially batting at number three. Uh, Glenn Maxwell looked good. Then, if I'm going to be brutally honest, threw away his wicket. I don't know why. When the team is three for 30-odd, Maxwell comes out and he tries to put everything over the rope. Um, I thought it was pretty silly, to be honest. I don't know why he had to play that sort of shot. I know it was there, and I know if it went for four, we would have done nothing but praise him and, and say it was a great shot. But you go out, and it makes you look a little bit silly. Uh, we still love you, Glenn, but like they just needed someone to come in and stabilize the innings and, and at least try and build towards a 150 or 140 to give you something to defend. It's, it's like all the RCB batsmen said, We've got a local party to go to. We need this to be done as soon as possible because there's a local party downstairs and we need to go and get to it because it was just, they just all threw away their wickets at one point, RCB. Siyash Prabhu Desai or Deshi or Desai. Look, it, it can literally be pronounced every way. I actually asked my parents how to pronounce this name and they said it the exact same way as me. So I'm going to say that I'm correct. <laughs> I'm going to say that Prabhu Deshi or Deshai or Desai, it's one of them. So we're going to run with that. 15 off 20 for him. There's just nothing really. There's just, there's nothing to talk about in this batting order. Shabazz Armour gone for seven. But speaking of the most emotional moment in cricket history. Whew, sorry, I just get a bit emotional now that I'm talking about it and it's really happened. Dinesh Kartik. Gone for zero. He's gone for a duck. He is officially not averaging 210 anymore. <laughs> oh, DK, it was fun while it lasted, my friend. 200. He was averaging 210. He was regarded as the greatest cricketer to ever hold the bat in hand for at least six games there. Unfortunately, you can say goodbye to that average. I don't know what it would be now, but it's probably like 105 is my prediction. If my math is correct, who knows? Probably not. Um... <laughs> Uh, Purple Patel gone for four off eight. Hasaranga eight off nineteen. At least, at least this tail end gave a crack at trying to get a total. Like Patel four off eight. Hasaranga eight off nineteen. Like at least they were out there consuming deliveries and at least <laughs> facing a fucking ball. They did so much better than their top order. Hazelwood three off eleven. <laughs> Inspirational stuff there. Hoff um, and Siraj gone for two. So. Look, I mean, the fact that Sunrise has also bowled 11 wides and a no ball for 12 extras. They bowled out RCB for 56 runs, if you don't include the extras. I mean, let that one sink in for you, RCB fans. I, I, yeah, it just wasn't good enough, to be honest. The SRH bowlers, Boovy Kuma, 1 for 8 off 2.1. Just a class showing from the Sunrise's bowling attack. Every single one of them had the same game plan. And their game plan was, 
We're bowling to take wickets. We're not here to keep RCB to under 160. We're here to bowl them out for fucking two runs, and they did exactly that. Just some really, really amazing bowling. Um, Marco Jansen, I mean, after that first over, it really was almost game over, and they just made it count. Uh, Jansen, three for 25 or four. What's there more to say? This guy's a freak of nature. He's incredible. Um, and I tell you what, I cannot wait for a South Africa Test Series tour of in Australia or in England or just or even the Windies or something. Like, wherever there is extreme pace and bounce for the pitches, I can't wait to watch Jansen play because he dominated in South African conditions in, uh, for a Test match. He's going to be incredible in Australia and in... in um, in England, he's gonna dump. I'm so I haven't been this excited for one guy's future since like Will Bukowski or Cam Green or something like that. Like he is seriously impressive. Natarajan as well, who is just having an incredible year for a guy that has had injury battles. That has has never been that forefront guy. He's always had good games and then bad games and then injury and then he'll come back. He'll do all right, but he's never been that show out guy. He's never been that you know star bowler. Well. That's actually a lie because I think he, he actually definitely was. when he 2018, was that his year where he had his best year? I can't remember. I've seen the stats of it a few weeks ago. Uh, but three for 10 off three. It's just, just great bowling. And this bowling attack is very, very strong. I mean, you've got two left arm quicks of Yanton and Nataraj, and that makes it as hard as it gets. But then you've got a guy like Bhuvaneshwar Kumar who can bowl 135s, is, has been one of the best white ball wicket takers in the last decade. You've got Umran Malik, who is a younger guy who bowls some absolute rockets into you. He bowls 145 plus, 1 for 13 or 4 for him. And Jagadisha Suchith, or Sukif, I don't know how you pronounce his last name, but he's a, he's, he's a very handy spinner, 2 for 12 off 3. So, you know, again, I don't know much about this guy. We've seen him play a few times. Ooh, he used to play for Kings Eleven. used to play for Mumbai. Okay. He's 28? Why haven't I really heard of this guy? How many games has he played? 20 games, 16 wickets, average of 33. Uh, that probably explains why. Uh, <laughs> no, that's harsh. I mean, he had a really good game, so credit to him. And anyone who, you know, as long as you're getting better and you're still getting better and better, that is the most important thing for him as well. So, you know what? Well, I'm happy for you. Sachith or Sakith or let's just call him Jagadisha. Let's call him that. That'll be easier. Hey, yeah, he bowled really, really well. So, hey, just an incredible bowling effort, a really average batting effort from the RCBians um, and Sunrisers. They were, they were always going to go and chase down 69 runs. So, yeah, I know. 69 runs? <laughs> you wouldn't want anything else to get, would you? Uh, just Abhishek Sharma, really, really good. He had intent from the first ball. He said, yeah, I'm going to be the man here, and I'm just going to go out here and chase all the runs. He did exactly that, 47 off 28. Um, look, it was disappointing to see him go out, obviously, because he would have loved to you know, get his 50 and stay not out at the end of the days. He would have lifted his own average up a little bit. That would have felt pretty good. He would have added a little 50 into his stats column, which he would have preferred, but it's okay because he batted really well, and he's having a pretty good season, actually. Um, eight fours he hit and, and, and a six. So, impressive. Cam Williamson not out for 16 off 17, two fours. Um, and Rahul Chapathi single-handedly won the game. Seven off three with a six. If he didn't hit that one six, yep, they, they just weren't going to win. It was a tough, tough game for Sunrisers, wasn't it? If you can't tell I am being sarcastic, yes. All right, into the RCB bowlers again. Nothing really to talk about. Mohamed Siraj, none for 15 off two. Hoffy Man Hazelwood, he was spanked around the park. None for 31 off three. Purple Patel, he just he just takes wickets. And I'm so, so happy to see him, you know, maybe with a, you know, after he takes a wicket with a smile on his face and just enjoying his cricket out there and, and, and doing well. That's all we want to see um, from him. And I'm super happy for him that he is able to be out there and playing cricket on a nightly basis still and... Um, you know, I'm sure he's still struggling with the passing of his sister and um, and that which would still carry any toll. It doesn't matter if you're getting paid big money to play the dream sport of your life. It, it's, it's still, you know, it's still grieving. It's still, you know, a tough, tough period in his life. But he, he's been a real professional about it. One for 18 off two and he's, he, he's so good. He's really, really good. And 
I can't wait to see him bowling in Australia at the World Cup this year. He better be picked at the squad, otherwise we will riot. Um, and the man Hasarunga, he has slowed down since the start of the season, but none for seven off one. There's nothing more you can do. The game was over. The game was over. So, hey, Sunrisers get the easy victory in the end. Let's go to the table. The Titans sitting very pretty at first. Um, SRH in second. So, if you haven't seen my Gujarat Titans versus uh, Kolkata review, it'll be up. It would have been uh, uploaded before this one. So, go and check that out. Um, Sunrise is in second, Rajasthan in third, RCB in fourth. Still RCB are in fourth, even though they just got destroyed. But now you have a look at their net run rate, and their net run rate is fucked. Their net... I did not mean to click on that. Um, their net run rate is absolutely screwed. So they're going to need a few big wins in the coming matches. Otherwise, they could get pipped out for a, like a fifth or a sixth team if their net run rate isn't good enough by the end of the season. So... I'm not saying anything yet, but I'm saying if you're an RCB fan, you will want to keep an eye on the net run rate because that's what it comes down to if you need to decide which team makes the playoffs. That's how you decide, I believe. So, yeah, you need to get that under control. LSG in fifth. They've slowed down a little bit. DC in sixth. Kolkata in seventh. Punjab in eighth. Um, oh, yeah, I don't even know what to say. Uh, CSK in ninth and Mumbai zero and seven in tenth. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't think any Mumbai Indian fans watch my videos anymore because I think they're sick of hearing me say Mumbai are down the bottom. <laughs> and I do not blame you. All right, into the stats. The Orange Cap, Butler, Pandya, Kale Rahul, Faf, Pritvi. Pretty standard. Joss Butler's 200 runs ahead. He's hit three tons. He is dominating. I don't think it's, it's his to lose. Uh, the, or the purple cap I meant, Yuzi Chahar with 18. The man Natarajan is bowling incredibly well. He's got 15. Kuldeep Yadav in 13, or well, with 13. The man DJ Bravo in fourth. Still, he's 52 years old and he's still taking wickets. Well done. He's got 12. Khan, Khalil Ahmed, Umesh Yadav, and Winindu Hasi Boy Ranga have got 11 each. So, the high scores. Butler's got three of the top four. That's no surprise. Best bowling figures. Shahar is still the only guy who's taken the five-wicket haul. Batting average. The man DK... Damn it. Damn it, DK. He's only averaging... Oh, I got his average right. Oh, go... A little pat on the back for me. The, my math was on point. I did say... So his average was 210, and I said it'll be 105. So I don't want to say I'm incredible at math, but I actually do now. Um, so Markram, 190. Gee whiz. DK, 105. I mean, that's still a fair average. <laughs> For a, for a middle order guy, Butler is just dominating. Hetmeyer has been decent as a finisher. And the man Hardik Pandy is having one of his best seasons in the IPL. So, hey, that will, ca that will cap it off by the looks of it. The matches tonight, we've got LSG Mumbai, um, which should be a great game. I think LSG should win that. But maybe Mumbai could get their first win. Who knows? Or they'll be 0 and 8, which would be... A little bit funny. So, hey, that is going to cap it off, guys. RCB, no, Sunrisers get the easy win. A few questions need to be asked of RCB, um, but they'll be fine. They'll, they're still fourth. They will be fine. They're still my team. This, uh, I can't believe I just said that. Then I take that. I'm going to edit that out. Holy shit. No one clip that. I did not mean that. RCB are not my team, but what I was going to say is, RCB are still my team predicted to win the final is what I meant. They're not my team. They're not, no one clipped that. I'll be mad. <laughs> I'm going to have to actually edit that out, aren't I? If someone's going to clip that and now people are going to think I'm an RCB fan. I do actually really like RCB, but I still think they'll win the title. That's what I meant to say. But hey, all right. Now we'll cap it off. I hope you guys enjoyed. Great win to SRH. I'll see you guys in the next one.